Well, hello and welcome to another online worship opportunity with the community of faith of Alamance Lutheran Church here in Alamance, North Carolina. Hi, I'm Pastor Ron Philibaum on another sunny North Carolina day. You know, this, this Sunday's text paints startling pictures of the horrific nature of sin. The church's repeated celebration of Holy Communion counters that tragic reality in a continued showing forth of the death of Jesus until he comes again. It is a dramatic declaration of how much God has done for you. So come along with us for this morning. We will learn and grow in faith together. Come on along, Jax. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we often, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Well, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the 65th chapter of Isaiah, begins with the first verse. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good following their own devices. The people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, 
I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it, so I will do for my servants' sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah's inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our psalm for the day is the 22nd psalm. It begins with the 19th verse. We'll read responsively by whole verse. But you, O Lord, be not far away, O my help, hasten my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls, you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people in the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise, the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. Poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Our second reading for the day comes from Galatians, the third chapter. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and, and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come. We are no longer subject to a disciplinarian for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring heirs according to the promise word of god word of life thanks be to god our gospel for the day comes from the eighth chapter of luke then jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of gerasenes which is opposite galilee as he stepped out on land a man of the city who had demons met him for a long time he had worn no clothes and did not live in the house, but instead in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his lungs, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon out into the wilds jesus then asked him what is your name and he said legion for many demons had entered him they be, they begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss now there on the hillside was a large herd of swine feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. 
Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were, they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in bowing our heads, asking God to bless our ears to listen to this message and our hearts to receive it so that we might be fortified disciples to go and share what God wants us to do and say. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. For you, Lord, are our fortress. You are our rock. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Amen. Well, today we will be looking at our gospel text thinking about how we might handle what we did not expect. Some of you may have seen the movie Cheaper by the Dozen with Steve Martin. He is a football coach and his wife is an author of a successful book. Oh, did I mention they have 12 children? Yes, 12 children. This dad thinks he can handle the kids and a move to a new town and a new house while he starts his dream job as a football coach at his alma mater. His wife has her doubts, but after his insistence that he can handle it, she proceeds to go on her book tour. She's a successful author, and boy, was Steve Martin's character ever wrong thinking that he could handle it. Trying to take care of work and take care of the kids at both home and school turns out to be a disaster. Things are so messed up that coach dad finally resorts to lying to his wife on the phone. He tells her that he has everything under control when actually everything is in utter chaos. Meanwhile, the university officials and local media representatives are raising the same question. Can this man coach two teams, the one at home and the one at the university? Well, there's plenty of evidence that he cannot. As I look back on my own fathering days, I don't believe that I was ever in over my head as much as Steve Martin's character was. I mean, then again, I didn't have 12 children or a wife who was a successful author on a book tour across the United States. Well, we all do know what it feels like to be in over our heads, especially during those days of diapers and feeding babies, right? But I think the demon-possessed man in Luke's story probably knew it better than most for he was literally in over his head. And I think of the pig farmer in our text whose, whose herd was drowned in the sea. He knew it too. He was in over his head after losing his livestock. And for those of you who have grown up on a farm or ever spent time with folks in agriculture, you know how many hours they put into their land and give to their livestock. I'm honored to have a friend named Cliff, who's a dairy farmer in Ohio, he calls me every year on my birthday. Through the years, I've spent some time on farms and learned 
what the land and the lifestyle mean to the farmers. They, like Cliff, are smart business people and fair and honest too. They know the value of their land in all aspects. The tillable land, the developed, their timber values, buildings, livestock. I imagine that assessment has not changed in all the years, even since the dawn of time. So you can imagine when Jesus comes along and drives out the demons from the naked wild man and into the swine, that pig farmer would have to be angry. If I did that here, I don't think the farmer would be joining our church. Jesus was traveling on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is largely a Gentile territory. The demons begged Jesus not to send them into the abyss. The abyss would be the realm of the underworld where the, some demons would be confined, which is, well, it's referenced in Revelations uh, chapter 9, uh, verses 1 through 11. The sending of the demons into the pigs seems strange and may have questioned the, the wisdom of such an activity. We know that pigs were unclean animals for the Jews, but Jesus is in Gentile territory. Perhaps the point of the story is that one man's deliverance is worth the destruction of many pigs. That doesn't save the bacon, wait for it, of the farmer. Now, even though this naked man who was a nuisance in the community was now free of the bondage of these demons, and presumably could become a part of the community. The townspeople are in fear and ask Jesus to just leave. As Jesus leaves, he asks the man to return to his home and to declare what God has done for him. And you know what? He did. He went proclaiming what God had done. We can hope that with that with his mind restored, his clothes have been to. He trusts in Jesus that has led him to witness to what he had done in his life, just like you can. Sharing what we believe in can be a tricky thing, you know? You know how you can sometimes understand something up here, but not really believing it here? For example, I recently came across an excellent illustration that displays the difference between intellectual faith and genuine faith. In the late 1890s, there was this famous tightrope walker strung a, a wire across Niagara Falls, one of my wife's and my favorite places to go. As 10,000 people watched, he inched his way across the wire from one side of the falls to the other. But when he got to the other side, the crowd, they cheered wildly. And finally, the tightrope walker was able to quiet the crowd down and shouted to them, do you believe in me? And the crowd shouted back, we believe, we believe. Again, he quieted the crowd and shouted to them again. He said, I'm going to go back across the tightrope, but this time I am going to carry someone on my back. Do you believe that I can do that? And the crowd yelled back, we believe, we believe. So he quieted the crowd one more time and then ask them, who will be that person? <laughs> you can imagine the crowd suddenly became silent. Not a single person was willing to apply the very truth that they professed to believe in, that the tightrope <laughs> tight walker could cross the falls with a person on his back. But we may believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But a question I have for you today, does our faith surpass the faith of demons? 
Are we willing to trust our lives with Jesus? Are we willing to follow him regardless of the cost? When our lives swirl out of control and we wonder how in the world we are going to handle all that is being thrown at us, allow me to remind you of something we learned long ago and you are welcome to join me in singing the simple verse. I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Amen. us join together in confessing our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, a life everlasting. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outreached hands and your promises of a home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms, especially white supremacy. Bring true freedom and hum human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace, hear our prayer. We hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick especially Sally, Barbara, Pucky, Kim, Melba, Carolyn, Kathy, Betty, Lynn, Sharon, Denise, Denise, Mark, Derek, Hermita, Malachi, Martha, Blake, Jill, Graham, Mari, Sonia, Vernon, Trev, George, Lillian, Layton, Ray, Cheryl, Jereen, Annie, Ann, Aaron, Bob, Carl, and June, Jerry, Jeremy, and Jonathan, Joan, Cadence, Lynn, Tara, and Tom. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, when a tornado ripped through our county in May, State Trooper Trey Hussey responded to smoke coming from a home. He stepped on a downed power line and has significant burns in the nerves of his legs. Heal him, Lord, and comfort him and his wife, Christy, while he recovers. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace, hear our prayer. Empower each of us to offer why we believe in you with younger generations, especially those mentioned in our bulletin today, and each other every day. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation and bring all these prayers to you, O God, including those we now speak out loud and quietly in our hearts. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. God offers Christ to the world. The bread and wine become Christ's own presence. By God's grace, we are recipients and also participants in this gift. But you return to God's mission here and throughout the world through your cash and checks is what God has first given you through all your own giftedness. We invite you to place your tithes and offerings in the brass plates in the entrances of our sanctuary. And you may also visit our website at alamancelutheranchurch.org to participate through digital financial giving. And just click the Give button. We thank you for your generosity, which enables us to follow through with the great commission that Jesus gives us 
in Matthew 28, 19, to go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, in the presence of Christ, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Well, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A gift of love for you and all who believe in Jesus. So come, however you are. This is the body of Christ which has been given for you. And this is the blood of Jesus which has been shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you to eternal life. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Now go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.